Sunderland, North East England. Big lad, isn't he? One of the fattest places in the country, where 40% of adults are overweight. 98% of people who go on diets fail. I will eat it all. If we get the right people, 98% of people who go for surgery succeed. Bloody gorgeous. Wow. Delicious. Obesity and the illnesses it causes are expected to cost the UK taxpayer £50 billion a year by 2050. I love bread. Bread and low pack butter. Oh, it's just heavenly. Absolutely heavenly. But Sunderland's Royal Hospital is fighting back, with a specialist weight loss ward tackling the obesity epidemic head on. Surgery is the last resort for them. They have tried everything. It's one of the busiest NHS obesity units in the UK. Last year, four surgeons performed over 600 procedures. I look in the mirror and I'm disgusted with myself at times. For most patients, it's their last chance. I need this operation to have a life. Their surgery is drastic, but results are astonishing. The character of these people is completely different after they've had successful surgery. With obesity-related illnesses vanishing with the lost weight. Why do we offer surgery? Uh, because it works. Get our life back together, Jeff. Do silly things with you again. <laughs> A taxi driver for five years, Sarah Porritt is 39. Because of my size, people get in and prejudge me. You know, oh, look at the state of you, you know, and another classic one, are you a man or a woman? People think, oh, you deserve it, you know, you're a fat bastard. You put the pies in, you put the Mars bar in. Life's bloody hard being this size. At her heaviest, she was 25 stone. After two years working with the Sunderland Royal Weight Loss Team, Sarah's managed to get it down. Now she tips the scales at 22 stone. But before putting herself on the path to surgery, Sarah's eating habits were out of control. I eat secretly and I have my food, like in my car. It's just purely and utterly, you know, just making a pig of myself. I get like, you know, crisps on offer, Diet Coke on offer, go get a couple of chocolate bars. Oh, brilliant. I'm like a little hamster. Cadbury's caramel. <gasps> Fruit pastels. Embarrassed. Disgusted. What can I say? It's there. That isn't including what I eat during the day as well, snack-wise. It's, it's my old life. Now I'm going for life-changing surgery and, you know, that's only one part of it, you know. The rest is up to me. You know, I've got to change. What will I do without my low pack butter? <laughs> and my white processed bread. At Sunderland Royal, every patient wanting gastric surgery is assessed by the weight loss team. So you've actually gained weight. The risks for yourself are one of the highest that we will be taking. To risk on one of the How many biscuits do you think you eat on a typical day? Probably about. I'd go up about five over the whole day. No, five at a time. Burning question. Mm -hmm. Are you still eating your fish and chips? I am, yep. <laughs> yes, yeah. Each patient must have a body mass index of more than 35 and obesity related illnesses. The weight is currently unrecordable. It's a BMI of 55.5. Type 2 diabetic. Snacks between meals and chocolates, crisps and pastries. Wait, I think she just forgets what she eats. You love pear shape. We will not be unemployed. <laughs> Final decisions to put patients on the road to surgery are made at weekly team meetings by nurses, dietitians, and surgeons. Their newest consultant is Kamal Mahawa. Look at any obese person. They will have multiple health problems. Diabetes, blood pressure, heart problems, who've got asthma, who've got multiple joint problems. You name it and they've got it. The weight loss team was founded by consultant surgeon Peter Small. This is an operation for life. There's no going back. It's not a diet. If you have to lose half a stone, you can do it. If you have to lose 11 stone, you can't. We've got an operation that will help them do that. It carries risks uh, and patients have to accept that.
Deborah Salkeld is 43. She's struggled with her weight for years. Racked with arthritis, her pain is now so severe, her legs can't support her body for more than a few minutes. When I'm in pain, I would just be lying down till the pain went. When I'm bad, sometimes I can't get out of bed. Deborah first went to find out about weight loss surgery more than 10 years ago, but she's only recently decided that surgery is right for her. On bad days, Deborah is confined to her bedroom upstairs. On good days, she might manage to get to her friend's house. <laughs> oh, she's very big. She's three times the upper size of a normal person. She's been in the system a number of years, and her weight has always been going up. She has either ignored her weight or been so embarrassed about her weight that she hasn't weighed herself for 16 years. Deborah, a single mum with three grown sons, was brought up in a close-knit family of three brothers and two sisters. My youngest brother came to live with us when he was 15. Um, so he was like, near enough, my son. And in 1999, when he was 18, he took his own life. When he went to heaven, it was very hard for me to deal with mentally. I'd become a recluse. All I did was stay in the house, eat, ballooned from a 22 up to a 30 clothes. I mean, I didn't even buy any clothes. I just wore my nighty all the time. And this went on. The longer it went on, the harder it was for us to come out. For, I would say, seven months, easy. Because I just didn't want to see anybody. I just ate. All the time, it just it was the only thing that made us feel any better. But I'd get like lonely, sad, I would get depressed, and then I would order a kebab or a pizza. But I wouldn't leave any, I would eat the lot. And my back's locked. I'm housebound now if, if there's nobody there. Can't go anywhere on my own because I need people to push us in my wheelchair. Can't even put petrol in because I can't walk from the petrol pump to the inside to pay for it. That's why. I need this operation to have a life. Because at the minute I haven't got a life unless somebody else helps us have a life. So we've now got a very, very heavy person who can hardly move around, who has come looking for a surgeon to do an operation to help her get her weight down. And my worry is that she's wanting the surgeon to lose her weight. And to date, we have seen precious little evidence that she's making any changes. Before surgery is agreed, each patient is given a small weight loss target of between four and five kilos, about 10 pounds. Having always failed to meet her target, Deborah's been given one last chance, and in desperation, she's invented a diet of her own. If I get hungry, I'll have my bowl of Rice Krispies with semi skin milk. If I'm starving, I drink one of these because it fills us with gas, fills us up. If this doesn't fill us when I've drunk this, I'll have a, two bananas and a satsuma. And then I'll make sure I have my tea, pre packed salad, always has been for four weeks. That's it, that's all I've been eating. Not a chip, not a crisp. If what I'm doing's working, it gives you the incentive to keep going. But if I haven't, I'll be devastated because you think, well, what more can I do? With an appointment at the hospital tomorrow, Deborah is about to find out whether her diet has worked. How old were you there? Just a couple of months. Taxi driver Sarah has been with her partner Carol for 15 years. Four years ago, they were married. Our first holiday. When they first met, Sarah was a heavy drinker. But when her mother died, she became an alcoholic. Why aren't you smiling? Yeah. When we first met, we, we always did everything together. A lot of that stopped, didn't it? Mm. To, it? Well, it stopped to the point of zero. It was just horrendous. When I look, you know, it's like very bloated, very overweight, a different person. Mm -hmm. You're 50 years. Very handsome there, don't I? Mm -hmm. She's been with us for 15, 15 years. I've got us into debt, you know. I haven't been a very nice lady. And I sometimes say to her, you know, I say, why? 
and she said, because I can see the real you. I just hope one day, you know, it comes out. Despite being brought up in a loving family, Sarah had a difficult childhood. I was sexually abused and, and raped as a, as a child, um, you know, from about the age of six till, you know, 13. Thought it was perfectly normal. I was always told to keep a secret. I can't ever really remember talking about it, but, you know, with my parents. Um, so by the time, you know, I got to 16, my head just exploded. I just went a bit crazy. I couldn't handle all these overwhelming, um, you know, thoughts and, and the emotions that I had, um, you know, so consequently I, I changed to alcohol, um, you know, and I also turned to, uh, to food. One in five patients who turn to the weight loss team have suffered some type of abuse. I like a protective layer on me. I thought, if I'm fat, then nobody will come to me. So then it would keep people at a distance, you know, that they would actually, you know, stand away from me. Oh, no! This weight that she's got around her is just like, you know, it's been described as like the food's going in to push everything down. If she takes that away, she now has to deal with what's inside. And she must obviously be ready to do that. Counselling has helped Sarah. Five years ago, she stopped drinking and she's been teetotal ever since. Sarah's partner has had to deal with many changes over the years. I don't know what I'm going to end up with. <laughs> I don't think I've met this, this next person. I'm just, you know, just confident that um, it's going to be somebody that has long to be with, you know. Carol's had to put up with a lot with me through my alcoholism and through my issues. No, oh, God bless you, she's still here. She must be more crazy than me. <laughs> Sunderland Royal Hospital has one of the busiest obesity units in the NHS. Here, thousands of patients are offered surgery as a last resort to losing weight. Maureen Boyle is the unit's senior dietitian. It's her job to retrain patients so they eat properly. By the time we got to us, people have tried everything, every fad diet, their lives are diets. My stomach wouldn't allow me to do anything else. We're trying to take that word out. You're never on a diet. We're trying to get them just on a healthy eating plan, making sensible choices. Yes, nobody will be perfect. Perhaps three a three week. Right. I'm not a big pastry eater. I'm saying that I had a sausage roll last night. <laughs> right, OK. <laughs> yes, you're allowed a whole mixture of foods, but it's in the right proportions and in the portion sizes as well. What we need to do just quickly before you go is set you this old weight loss target. Nothing it's to panic funny. about. Don't pull that a face, don't panic, it's OK. <laughs> um, what the weight loss target is for is just basically to show us that you're willing to make some changes. I never want to be this weight again. Okay. Never. With a modest weight loss target of four kilos, just nine pounds, Deborah Salkeld has always failed to meet it. After many years with the unit, today is make or break. She has to meet the target, or she'll be discharged with no hope of surgery. With her is her sister and niece, here to see whether Deborah's diet has worked. We will have to leave go for your Deborah mind, OK? But Deborah never wants to see or hear her total weight. She only wants to know if she's hit the target. If you were trying to lose weight, would you not weigh yourself? Uh, and my understanding is she hasn't. She could quite easily actually have put on more weight mm -hmm. just by eating the wrong stuff. Just over what we wanted. How, how much? Um, 0.8 of a kilogram, which isn't that much, I know, much but it lost? depends. You've lost near enough the four kilograms that we asked you to. How many pounds is that? It's about nine or ten pounds. Oh. <laughs> so you've done really well. How, how have you achieved it, Deborah? Just Diet Coke, prepared salad, rice crisps. Yeah. No, nothing else. Yeah. I'm just proud of myself. You, you need I to am. be. You've done extremely well. Well, hello. Hello. How are you? <laughs> right. The upper limit of what we would accept has been normal weight. It would be at 75 kilograms. In old money, that comes out of somewhere around about 12 stone. You are currently 36, 35. 
I did never, never knew that. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to know, like, I never wanted no, to know. No, but I think you've got to come face to face with what you are, mm -hmm. right? If you're 35 stone at the moment and your ideal is 12, that means you're carrying 23 stone yeah. too much. Yeah. Two people. I know. I would expect you to lose at least one of those. So mm -hmm. you're still going to be 20 plus stone. But I'll still be healthier than every single where I am now. Anything seems like a dream at the minute. How long can I go on like this anyway? So. Okay. I shall put you on the list today. Thank you. You must keep doing what you've been doing. All right. Healthy food's not rubbish. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. We're a big family and we, we do a lot of things together, but she doesn't because people stay. Just want her to get her life back to how we were. Let's go and have some nice Christmas. <laughs> Oh, my God, my God. Oh, I'm sorry. Slipping on a non-slip floor. <laughs> I could do that. 65-year-old ex-merchant seaman Jeff Allen weighs 36 stone. I didn't have a very good childhood, so a way to escape the problem that joined the Merchant Navy. I started as a deck boy and ended up as a ship's master. Now registered disabled, Jeff injured his back 15 years ago. I was always an active person. I've gone from a person who built a boat. I love gardening. I've become a cabbage, really, depressed. I try to keep active, but I'm limited. I get short of breath. I can't walk anywhere. I've got pride as well. I don't like people to see me like I am. So consequently, lately, I've tended to hide away. I'm disgusted with myself at times. I look in the mirror and I think, how have you possibly let yourself deteriorate like that? Jeff suffers from angina and diabetes, and he stops breathing in his sleep. Over 15 years, Eve, his wife, has watched as Jeff put on a stone a year. I was about 17, 18, that's all. Basically, just wanted to find it to prove that I haven't just been a fat slob all my life. <laughs> that was the first time I'd ever gone round the world in one hit. He lives on his memories, does Jeff. <laughs> Miss the sea, but it's not just the sea, is it? it it's, it's the way of life. Oh, yeah, we had some good times, didn't we? Jeff's been under observation by the weight loss team for two years and is about to have a temporary gastric balloon fitted. This will partly fill his stomach's volume, reducing the amount Jeff can eat. He's hoping for more permanent surgery, but Jeff's got a heart condition making him a high risk and the surgeons won't operate until he's lost some weight. It's under a local anaesthetic and they put a balloon into your stomach and then they fill it up with water and then you have the feeling then that your stomach is always full. So you lose some of the urge to eat. It can only be in for six months yeah. because the, the balloon will deteriorate. And hopefully within the six months, I'll have lost enough weight to have a bypass. That's a party. <laughs> Though not a high risk procedure, there are side effects. All patients after they've had a balloon in will experience nausea. So they don't feel like eating, they don't feel like drinking. And even two to three weeks down the line, the patient may well be sick. They feel I believe, I haven't had a balloon myself, that they've overeaten. The stomach has been stretched and its response is to be sick. What you're feeling now is exactly what we would expect after a balloon. Basically, your stomach's trying to get rid of it. It's the muscle in the stomach wall cramping on the balloon. It does relax, given time. With just two weeks before her gastric bypass surgery, Sarah is out for her last slap-up meal. The operation will reduce her stomach to the size of an egg. From then on, it'll be tiny portions only. But Sarah just loves her food. Oh, I can't look at them puddings. <laughs> I'm having this life-changing surgery. We neither have chunky chips or skinny fries. No, I want chunky chips. I dread to think how big my stomach is. You know, pretty big. It's got to be to fill, fill all of this. Um, and for it to go, you know, that big down to less than an egg size. 
I'm going to be so restricted, you know, to, to what I can eat. Well, you're having ribeye, aren't you? Oh, yes. Oh, I'm going to miss ribeye steaks. <laughs> I love bread. Bread and low-pack butter. Oh, it's just heavenly. I think a fantastic selection by myself. I'm not saying that I'm not going to struggle when it's done. I'm a lot more psychologically ready now. <laughs> How are you feeling about it, Arlen? I'm not worried about the uh, operation as such. The only part that really concerns me is the psychological side of it. You know, we've just been through one life change. Yeah. What were we drinking? Mm. Mm. And that was hard. I don't really know unless you put up with me, love. No, no, do I? No. <laughs> this is my last mouthful. That's it. <laughs> I will eat it all. There's no hope for you. To make her stomach more accessible during the operation, Sarah must go on a 10-day liver-reducing diet. For another week, this is her daily food allowance. There's no sustenance there. You know, there's no sugar, there's no fat. So my body's just gone into, like, a shutdown mode. I've gone very cold, very sleepy. You know, they do say it does get better after day three, so hopefully tomorrow I'll be full of the joys of spring and frolicking around. <laughs> Nearly squashed you then. <laughs> that looks nice, mm. <laughs> After her bypass, Lovely. Sarah will be on pureed food for at least a month, yeah. and her body will never again properly process refined sugar. You've done very well. I've had enough of this now. After three weeks with his gastric balloon, Jeff's feet are showing signs of reduced fluid retention. This here was way out there. Well, pigs trotters. <laughs> Elephant titers. <laughs> well, I love the encouragement. Of yeah. No wonder I don't want to go out. Each other, <laughs> I get embarrassed going out with you, didn't I? Yeah. But... I know he'll get there. When we divorce, <laughs> when I'm a lean, mean bonker machine, she's getting kicked into touch <laughs> because I'll be getting a younger model. So there. We'll get our life back together, Jeff. Be able to go and I can do silly things with you again. <laughs> Despite the jokes, Jeff is not feeling well. And two weeks later, he's in for a routine checkup with the dietitian. You're always aware that you've got something inside. You're burping all the time, you're full of wind. If you drink water, you can always taste the balloon. A patient with a balloon normally feels sick for two weeks, but for Jeff, it's been five. This is where red rum gets weird, isn't it? Now he's being weighed for the first time since the balloon was inserted. Get yourself balanced. That's 188.6. Wow. I was actually 219 when I had the balloon fitted. Yeah, happy with that. In those five uncomfortable weeks, <laughs> Jeff has lost four stone, 11 pounds. That's an excellent result so far. Told you. Run through a typical day then of what you're eating now. What would you have for your breakfast on a morning? One wheat of bix, yeah. lunchtime, half a small tin of soup. But he, you know the pot noodles? Right. Pot He'll noodle. have half of that or, you know. And then for my tea, which is about half past five, six... He doesn't six. have nothing more till tea time. I'll do him two little... Oh, do you want... Sorry, let you tell him then. Are you the cook? <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's why. To be honest, I don't want it. So you're not hungry? No. No, I feel... No. I which feel... is good. Although you don't feel hungry, it is still important that you yes. do eat. Every time I eat something, about ten minutes after, I guess awful tummy ache. Remember, it's got a ball in there. Exactly. You know, uh, that's got fluid in it. Yes. It's filling the capacity. Hence, you know. Oh, you I know can, that. I can feel it. You can feel it. Yes. Yeah. But that is absolutely brilliant so far. I'm pleased with them. This is the start of it. Yes. Brilliant. brilliant. Well done. Brilliant. Probably lost brilliant. more in the first few weeks than uh, the normal. However, that will now slow down but I won't be expecting the same as what he's lost in the last few weeks to continue at that rate. The hope now is that Jeff so. will get used to the balloon and the sickness will stop. Today, at the busiest NHS obesity ward in the north of England, Sarah Porritt is first on the list for a gastric bypass. At last, two and a half year wait. I 
chicken and compost. The operation will create a tiny new stomach the size of an egg and bypass two meters of her intestine. Yes. Yeah. The explosion in weight loss surgery okay. has really come around because we now do keyhole surgery. There was a death rate of about one in 50 in the, these patients with open surgery. One in 500, that's what we quote now. So it's a massive reduction. It is far safer and the people get up and out because they're not sore. After surgeons Kamal Mahawa and Neil Jennings have operated, Sarah's obesity-related illnesses should start to improve. Don't look too bad. I think we need a bit of, bit of tilt. Diabetes is what's going to cripple modern healthcare in the Western world in this century, and every single country is, is desperately trying to find a solution to it. We save an awful lot of money by operating on these people now and decreasing their medications that they're on for the rest of their life. Sarah's diet has worked. Her liver is smaller and can be clamped out of the way. The bypass begins. First, part of the stomach is cut, then stapled into a small pouch. The capacity of the stomach is normally 1.5 litres. The capacity of this stomach is going to be 20 to 30 ml. After this, the surgeons head south, cutting through bundles of Sarah's fat. The whole idea is to sort of create a road. A bit goes to the right, a bit goes to the left, and then you've got a passage in the middle. Finally, they measure the amount of small intestine to be bypassed, up to two meters. The longer the length of bowel, shorter will be the length to digest and absorb. Sewing the tiny new stomach to the shortened intestine can be the trickiest part of the operation. The, the remnant stomach will stay inside. In gastric bypass, nothing is removed. How's that mean? That's acceptable. I would expect perfect. her to lose 40, 50 kilos, something like 70% excess body weight. Most certainly, her diabetes will improve. She will have some loose skin as well, so she'll have to think about what to do with that. She will probably have a better quality of life, having lost all the weight. Jeff's had his balloon for two and a half months and lost just over eight stone. There's a difference with my legs. I haven't worn these jeans, I suppose, for three years. I've got my wedding ring back on. I suppose I'm getting anorexic, to be honest. I'm going from one degree to another. Are you wearing your coat? While delighted with his weight loss, the balloon is still causing him discomfort and nausea. I don't know how much more of this vomiting and, and sickness I can take. Sickness normally disappears after two or three weeks, but staff at the hospital are concerned at how quickly Jeff is losing weight. Jeff's balloon's been in a couple of months. When I saw him the last time, he was managing all right, and it's actually getting worse, it's quite strange. So I don't want to leave it any longer. The number one concern is hydration. If you can't get fluids down, that's our biggest problem because we're getting a risk of dehydration with the balloon. He complains of quite a lot of vomit, so and I wasn't too worried. And he's diabetic as well. But it sounds like it's deteriorated in the last couple of weeks. All right, if you're not getting any nutrition at all, I think we just take it out. It's not fair to let him lose weight by starving him. This tube was very close to too short a time, really. I'm quite concerned, the fact that you also struggling with liquids. And my diabetes as well, mm -hmm, I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. with. I've taken the liberty of deciding to take your balloon out. It would be best that we admit you today and we get things checked out, we, we see how your blood sugars are doing, and then we take your balloon out while you're in the hospital. We just have to do it as an emergency. Right. No. I'm disappointed, really. Then would that jeopardise my well, chances for a bypass? The idea of balloon was so to get it down to a stage where we can do some safe operating on you. I don't think you're an impossible. Worried that Jeff's fluid loss could damage his kidneys, Surgeon Kamal has decided the balloon must come out three and a half months early. It's just not safe. He, he said his blood sugar had been dropping down quite dramatically. Low blood sugar can kill you very quickly. So I just don't want to risk it. If it carried on, 
he could have gone into renal failure. You know, this could have uh, damaged his kidneys. Swallow, please. Hold well on. Excellent. I'll ask you to cough it out. Nice and wide for me. Good. Surgeon Ali Al Hamdani punctures the balloon to remove the half liter of fluid. And you can see that's the balloon. Here we are, I punctured the balloon. Good job, you're doing so well. So I can see now I've grabbed the balloon. The next step is try to get this balloon out from the stomach. Well done, Jeffrey. Just the last step there. Well done. Well done. Another cup. Well done. Here we are. Well done. Yeah, I think Jeffrey done very well. <laughs> you never put another balloon down, mate. Well, we go back to the ward, and when he's a bit better with himself, he can go home. And then we can d decide what's the next step going to be. Well, again, thank you. Well That's done, it's a pleasure. Much. Pleasure. You live on your own at home? So no, yeah. I've, I've, I've got a no wife. Is she on the ward waiting for you? Or no, she she's later? probably playing darts. <laughs> <laughs> While having lost enough weight for future surgery, Jeff will need more tests to ensure his heart will cope under general anaesthetic. Two weeks after her gastric bypass, Sarah is on a diet of mashed fish and vegetables. The key is, is eating regularly, so my body is not going into shock. It does look like a meal, surprisingly enough. Thank you. You're welcome. But what I've got to be conscious of is little mouthfuls before my fork used to just be laid and I just used to trough it in. Now, you know, Carol finishes her tea, you know, well before me. All right. Yeah, I've got another two weeks before I can go on to, like, scrambled egg. Can't wait for scrambled egg. There'll be two of you in there. That was tight. And this was one of my smaller tops. This is my wedding ring. Just... I wasn't worried about the psychological side of it, but she's been all right. I mean, just you're sitting there now, she just shrunk your face. My watch is hanging off. And I've lost five stone, worth well, five stone, one pound, actually, to be precise. <laughs> and it will be gone forever, you know, God willing, you know, touch wood. Sarah has started to come to terms with her past and has been meeting people who also struggle with their weight at a local group. Since I've been in recovery and, you know, meeting nice, like-minded people. I have gone wrong in my food choices. I don't really need that sort of barrier, you know, because not everybody wants to take advantage of Sarah. People now are liking me for me, genuine people who love me. After 10 years of indecision and accompanied by her closest family, Deborah is finally on the ward and ready for weight loss surgery. It's what I want. It's not a proper life the way it is at the minute. She's engaged, and I can tell that because her weight's coming down. But there's something she has never told the weight loss team. At home, Deborah regularly falls down the stairs because her legs can't support her weight. Some social problems. And her family have also only just found out. She's been confined to living in a bedroom because of her size and her disability. Living on a mattress on the floor now in one room, isn't she? Mm -hmm. Once she's had that assistance to get upstairs by friends and family and she's been made comfortable, that's it, she's stuck there for days. She doesn't want to be a burden to anybody. I think she feels that it's her problem and she's needed to get up and fix this herself. It was a big hit on her life when my brother died. I don't see them two are probably the closest. You see the change in her. She should be dead confident, confident of going out anywhere. You understand that the whole yes. point of that operation is it's going to try yeah. and convert your, your stomach into a tube. Mm -hmm. That's going to reduce the volume of food that you can eat. Yeah. All operations carry risks. Yeah. We can get leaks from the staple lines. Mm -hmm. That can be very dangerous. Right. Mm -hmm. I need your signature on a consent form then. Right. Just need the feet to go on the sheet and then I'll be all right. At 33 stone, nine pounds, Deborah is one of the largest patients surgeon Peter Small has operated on. She's having a gastric sleeve. It means seven eighths of her stomach will be removed. And this is the side that we're going to be taking out. The size of the stomach will expand to take about one and a half litres. What this operation aims to do is to reduce its fill volume. So we're taking out the part of the stomach that expands when you eat. Essentially, we reduce the stomach volume. So it's irreversible. 
What a delight. The new stomach is stapled into a tube, but if Deborah falls down the stairs again, it could burst. You get your finger in that. Once over the operation, Deborah's progress should be rapid. She could lose one stone a month, but the family's worries about her mobility must be taken seriously. Her brother's quite right. You can't have somebody falling over in the house, potentially damaging them. She's broken her ankle in the past, doing exactly that. Uh, so we have to try and make sure that we're happy she's going home to a safe environment and make any changes that might help. Deborah will go back home, and to help her recovery, the hospital will arrange for care. But for Deborah, it's clear her two-story house is not ideal. When I see how stressed my brother got the other day when he came over, he was, like, mortified. And I thought, well, when he fell down the stairs, I did every other day. And if my knees go with my arthritis, my knees just give way no matter where I am. And I did come a cropper down the stairs. That does actually make you stand up and think, you know what, or if that does happen. Do you know what would be ideal? Just somewhere on the same floor. I now know that I do need either a bungalow or a flat, I do. You look gorgeous, you Spider-Man. No regret? No, no. I suppose it would be better that I didn't have stairs to bounce down and things, you know what I mean? At Sunderland Royal, the weight loss team follow their patients for two years after surgery. It's a weight loss anyway. Oh, excellent. They check that people are eating properly and losing weight at the recommended rate. Can you manage a good variety of foods? Um, I can manage some bread, but once I've got two thirds full, my pouch is like... Four months after her bypass, Sarah Porritt's weight is falling fast. Thank you. But it's not just the small portions. Before surgery, she was 25 stone. I'm 17 and a half stone, so that's an eight stone loss. Somebody said to me the other day, you've lost a person. My general health is, uh, I'm gonna have to stop, I'm knackered. General health's good, next torture. But like every weight loss patient, Sarah's been left with lots of loose skin. I've got flabs of skin there, I've never had before, it's like, you know, not nice. That's my tummy, my inner thighs. I'm totally embarrassed. You know, that skin that I'm pulling there, it's all loose skin. And I knew it would happen, but um, I've just got to deal with it. I keep telling patients, you look great with clothes on. How do you look with clothes off is a different matter altogether. It may even need plastic surgery later on, but the resources within the NHS to deal with that are not available. Even though I would like them all to have it, they can't. In the Northeast, plastic surgery on the NHS is only available to weight loss patients who've dropped their body mass index to 28. For most, that's almost impossible. But for Sarah, that's not her only problem. She's been doing really well on the weight loss side, but it's been quite stressful on the relationship as well. I've got a colleague that puts that on the consent form, warns them that um, there's marital disharmony and breakdown. It's increased following weight loss surgery. It's quite common. Well, that's actually people finding a new lifestyle. She if she wants to go and do everything now that she couldn't do before, if you like, and but she wanted to do it all at once. I must admit, I have got a new lease of life. I want to go out and do everything. I want to do everything yesterday. The first time in a long time, she says, I am 52. I mean, 52 is not that old, you know what I mean? But I don't think she wants me to leave her behind. She has said, if you're going to go, just go. And I'm like, I love you. We'll sort it out yet again. <laughs> We've been through quite a lot of changes, you know, so. We will settle in time and you know, I, I do love her. Four months after his gastric balloon had to be removed, Jeff has maintained his eight stone weight loss. The wheelchair's gone, and he's on the hunt for a boat. My personality's changed. I've, I've gone back to being how I used to be now. I'm quite jovial again. I, mean, I don't feel doom and gloom no more. The next step should be permanent, a gastric bypass. But the weight loss team is worried whether Jeff's heart can take it. We had discussed him in November last year. 
and we said we need an anesthetic opinion in view of his angina and coronary stents. Jeff must be tested by other specialists before the team will be convinced he can survive an operation. So for now, he'll have to wait. We admitted him and then we need to check with any studies as well and that he's had a depressive history and general ups and downs. Next. Yeah. Okay, 39 year old woman from Newcastle. Lost 19 kilograms in the past with Paul McKenna's hypnotherapy DVD. <laughs> but while he waits, Jeff is more active than he's been for years. It's just changed my life completely. Makes a change to sitting on my throne all the time. I've weakened a couple of times, I must admit. I've had fish and chips a couple of occasions and thoroughly enjoyed them and felt guilty afterwards. But never mind. I lived on memories. And I always said that if the good Lord decides, you know, it's time the lights went out, I can't complain. But at the same time, if he's listening, I'd like to live a little bit longer. And I know for a fact that having a bypass will help me along them lines and give me a better quality of life. Six months after the balloon was removed, Jeff has just heard he'll get the gastric surgery he wants. Deborah is back at the clinic, two months after having seven-eighths of her stomach removed. Proud of her progress, her total weight is now all she cares about. 195.6. Brilliant. Do you know how much that is? Maybe you're going to ask me that. <laughs> 30 stone 11. Oh, oh brilliant. brilliant. <laughs> oh, he's not this <laughs> isn't he? In total, you've lost somewhere around about 35 kilograms, which is five and a half stone since we first saw you. You have lost half a person. Good, good. You'll probably be 10 stone lighter by a year's time. She'll be far more mobile, her joints won't hurt. She'll discover that there is life outside of her home uh, and uh, she'll become a different person. I hope. This will last us all day. This, will, this ham will probably still be here tomorrow. <laughs> Deborah's not just losing weight and sticking to her new eating regime. She's also just got the keys to her new home, and it's a bungalow. It's brilliant. I've waited for it for a long time, and I just love it. And this is my bedroom. My life has changed since I had the operation. Unbelievable. Just because I said to one person, this is how I live. I'd still be lying in agony in my bed, in that big four-bedroom house where I want to use one room. Now, I've like got a bedroom, a sitting room and a kitchen, so I'm spoiled. So I've got three rooms instead of one. Why didn't I do it years ago? I don't know, something just changed in my mind that said this cannot be it for the rest of your life. Six months after her operation, Deborah is seven and a half stone lighter. She's moving more easily, and her medication is reduced. I love Christmas. It's the best time of the year. This is the Christmas I would have had years ago. I've never felt in the Christmas spirit for a lot of years, whereas I do this year, so this is what happens when I feel in the Christmas spirit. I give up alcohol, that gives me a bite of the cherry. I've had this surgery, I've had yet another bite of the cherry of life. How lucky am I? Sarah's gained a new life and lost 10 stone. And there's one challenge she's been waiting to tackle. It's a local hill, yeah, well, and six sure. months after her bypass, she's ready to give it a go. For God's sake, don't fall on your ass, Albert. Accompanied by her partner, Carol, You're right, Carol. and close friends. Come on. Keep going, Carol, there's McDonald's just round here. Yeah. There's little steps there. I do little steps, it's the big steps I'm worried about. <laughs> I do look at people and I think, I want to be like you. I've always wanted to be skinny. I'm so jealous of people that can just go and just do whatever they want, fit into an aeroplane seat, go into a toilet, and to be able to fit in the cubicle. It's great, I can do it now. This is the way to the pub, isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. I can cross my legs, I can fasten my shoelaces, I can almost touch my feet. Knackered. Sarah will have to carry on working at her weight, but the team at Sunderland Royal has done its job. By 2050, 55% of adults in the UK are expected to be clinically obese. For the surgeons in Sunderland, the conveyor belt of obesity continues. 
Obesity is a problem that's not going to go away overnight. And until we make drastic changes to society, we are going to have this for many, many years to come. Now I've lost about five stone. I'll show you how rapid it's coming off. It's, but until we get people to take responsibility, then we're going to have to offer surgery. You prolong their life, you make people happy, and uh, you save the NHS a heck of a lot of money. God, you can see for miles. <laughs> Lay down on your belly. <coughs> my bypass has turned my life around. I'm no longer diabetic. I've no longer got high blood pressure. I've got no joint pains. My whole body's functioning properly as it's supposed to be. So now I'm not a drain on, you know, the national health. My mum passed away 10 years ago. So this is a way of saying, I love you, mum. I just want to let it go in memory for me, mum. So, there we go. Ooh, that was a good one. Well done, I'm proud of you. I want more than that, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> to me losing my fantastic 10 stone. Cheers. Cheers. Well done, sir. Thanks. Fantastic.